Hello everyone, this is Larry Jeeping Mo, and today we're going to go over some of the maintenance things we need to do to our rigs after we've gone wheeling or just day-to-day -day items. Things that get overlooked and can blow up to be bigger problems. So with that, let's get under the Jeep and let's get to it. Okay, so some of the things we need to check, you know, after we've spent the day out wheeling, beating a tar out of these things, is this the basic nut and bolt check. Right for our track bars and you know, little things, we can always check our tie rods, sway bar disconnects. In this case, or disconnects. If you got them connected, still, if you're running Rubicon, you still need to check them. Our control arms, we should go through those. If you want actual torque settings, go for your manual. And you know, all of these, whether it be the whether they hook into the axle or they hook into the frame. And then we're going to go over a few things like diff fluids, transfer case fluids, that kind of thing. So with that, let's see what's loose and what's not. Okay, so on this uh, 2018 JL, you know, a lot of thing under here is going to be 21 millimeter. And I think that's going to be pretty much universal for most Jeeps out there. Obviously, some of the older ones are going to be different. But they use a flag nut on the back side, right? So you can access the front. And I'd, I'm just going to go through with breaker bar, small extension, 21 millimeter socket. So I can reach through here and, and I can see if it's tight. So this is where it came loose on us when we were down at Turkey Bay OHV. My track bar came loose and I didn't realize it. So when I got back up on the highway, this thing had some very bad wobble to where you almost couldn't keep control of it. And that's when I discovered that my track bar was loose, right? So this side doesn't have the flag nut that the other side had. I'm gonna tighten on the nut side of it. So it just, it's tight, that's tight. All right, that's good. All right, so let's run down a few other things. So, control arms, 8, 18 millimeter. <clears throat> Those are tight. And we can check the other side as well. Now, the breaker bar is nice to tighten things up, but it can be a little bit of a pain because you can't ratchet it. Okay, so that's tight. Okay, so on my Jeep, I'm running these uh, metal cloak disconnects. Obviously, if you have a Rubicon, you don't worry about disconnecting them. So on mine, I only check them at the top, but it's always good to make sure that everything's tight. Okay, so just go through it all, make sure it's tight. Okay, so if you have factory, I think the tops are 15 millimeter. And you can just give them a, now there's a spot on the back that you can, on factory, you put a wrench so they don't rotate. So check those there. The other thing to check while we're right here, which is 15 millimeter, is make sure your tie rod retainer is a little tight. So that one was a little bit loose. Right. So just go through and check. The other, the other one is, and one you should, carry with you is either a 15 millimeter socket or wrench so that after you get done beating on it on a trail you have to readjust your steering wheel your actual drag link comes in you know on this JL this is where you would adjust your steering this is where you would adjust your steering wheel right here you just unloosen this 15 millimeter it easily turns and then you can adjust your, your wheel being horizontal. And on a JL, I assume it's the same on JK, if that wheel isn't horizontal or in its zero position, you eventually start getting engine code errors and traction control errors because it thinks you're turning. And when it's monitoring the wheels, it's telling itself something entirely different. I've had to I've take... I've taken it in for that, but it's when I learned about how closely it monitors that. 
Okay, so something else that's always good to check. Front differential. We run a, a skid plate on it. Eventually, you're going to have to change your fluid. And if you are changing fluid, always take your, your fill plug out first. You take your fill plug out first, then you would take your drain plug out. There's nothing worse than draining it and then realizing, yeah, hey, guess what? You can't fill it. So that is just a 3-8 hex off a ratchet. I'm running a short little extension to get up in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check and make sure we have fluid. Right. And all we're, do, we're going to do is just check for fluid. Okay, the fluid level is right there, so we're good. Now you want to try to be as level as possible when you do this. Because if it's too far back or too far forward, you're going to get some spillage like that. Now I think I filled this when I was on the hill the other direction. So that's why the ran out a little bit, right? So just, you know, got to get a stupid tight. I got some tape on it, right? And then make sure you, you wipe it all off so you can monitor any leaks. Now also, if you see any leakage on the very top of your seal, on the bottom, right? You have to look around there and if you see caked up dirt or grease that means that your cover seal is leaking replace the seal so you don't lose your fluid okay something that gets overlooked a little bit is your winch so just go through here and just make sure that your winch is tight right, so just go through all your bolts because if you start obviously you start needing this and your bolts have vibrated loose You'd be amazed how much abuse everything takes when you're bumping around on the trail. So just go through all these, make sure they're tight. Right? So go through all your suspension stuff. Check your shocks, drag links, track bar, you know, go through your control arms. Go through all that and make sure they're all tight. Now let's go to the rear. Okay, so crawled up under the back of this thing. So it's no less important than the front. Same thing. Go through your track bar. Check your shocks. Make sure your shocks are tight. Okay. We're gonna we can check our dip fluid. And you know the big thing is go through all these. Go through your sway bar connects. Let's make sure everything's tight. Make sure that all your hoses are up. You don't want to take a chance on your axle vent being being down and go through some water. And then, okay, so some of these are flagged on the back side. They can just Tight. And once again, if you want to go through all your torque specs, look up your torque specs. Most of these are, are going to be 21s. Okay, don't forget about your sway bar drag links. You know, they're different, they're different sizes for top and bottom. Right? They're 18s on the bottom and 19s on the top. So just go through and I'm a little snug just to make sure. So that's the bottom one. Now the top one is 19 millimeter. Just give that a little snug, right? And do that on both sides because you have two. All right, so let's check the other end of this track bar. Now on this one, this side's got a flag nut on the back. <clears throat> that's tight, right? So just go through and check all your shocks. Right. Something else you want to look at while you're under here is your exhaust. Make sure it isn't all beat up. Because believe it or not, dented up exhaust can cause you engine issues. Right. So go through, give this a good once over. Look for anything that just looks abnormally beat to death or might need some issues. 
you know how you wheel okay so just like on the front go through and make sure that you don't see no greasy dirty buildup around your cover on your rear diff right and it's same thing just a 3 8 take the, take this plug out your fluid should be right at that level I'm leaning back a little bit right now so it should run out a little bit so just pull this plug right and these don't get to be crazy tight so what you do is you just pull this out if you get fluid that's a good thing and that is not So this is the reason why you do this. This shard that came out shouldn't have been there. So I have no idea what that's off of. Alright, so now on your transaxle, this is your fill, right? You just pull that and that's the level your fluid needs to be. That's your fill and that's your drain always pull the fill first just in case you can't get the drain out right so you can always elect to not change it but once you've drained it you're committed right so then just give the underside a good look over take a look at your drive shafts make sure everything there looks good All right we don't beat on this thing too hard so just give it a once over See the condition of your rig. Everything needs maintenance. And these are just simple things to check. You know, these are simple things to check after every time you go wheeling. The diffs, I think those are every 30,000 a spec. At 30,000, I change the fluid in both front and rear and transfer case. So, with that, let's go back up top. All right, so just a couple more things. If you did have to do winch and when you're out, make sure that you unspool that and wind it back in under tension. You know, go out and strap off onto a tree or something, pull yourself back in so your rope, so that your cable, rope, whatever you have is back under tension. And you know, then there's just the basics. Winch will wash your fluid. Check your brake fluid to make sure that you do indeed still have some. Check your overflow bottle for your antifreeze. Running larger tires. Check your power steering. You will periodically, depending on trails, air filter. We change that out about every 5,000 miles. Might be a little excessive. All right? And then lastly, Go through and retorque your lug nuts. And these big tires, you have to rotate those quite regularly as well. We rotate about every 2,000 miles. These mile stars really don't have any cups on them. Okay, so as you go through the Jeep and you need fluids and stuff, pull out your manual. You know, there's some things in here, especially if you're still under some kind of warranty. You know, the dealer will want to change your diffs and everything. It's an easy, easy thing to do. You just make sure you look up and get the right kind of fluid. Where the JL is running at full synthetic, 0W20. I'm not sure what the JKs run. But that is all in, the, in your manual, right? So pull your manual out. Take a look at it and see. It's always a good reference. They designed it for a reason, right? Just crawl under there, make sure everything's good and tight. It's something that it's good practice doing on just about any vehicle periodically. Make sure everything's tight, make sure everything's lubed. You know, the newer Jeep, the JL, doesn't have grease certs anywhere unless it's aftermarket parts you've put on. Go through, if you have an older Jeep, go through, grease it as well. So remember, maintenance is everything, no matter what you're talking about. So go through, 
do your proper maintenance, give it a good look over, check out some of the other videos, and we'll see you in the next adventure. Thank you.